Aloha, and today we are on lesson five. I'm recording from the pavilion at Keakealani just to do something a little bit different this morning. I hope you enjoy it. Um, we see some student work here on our screen. So what do you notice about this work and what do you wonder? So just observe it for a minute. Think about what you notice and what you wonder. Okay, you might notice that we have a tape diagram and our tape diagram is broken into 16 parts and 12 sixteenths of them are colored gray. You might also notice that our tape diagram is broken into four larger parts. You see the four larger parts and three of them are colored gray. So oh, there are three fourths, three out of four and 12 out of 16. You might have noticed in the subtraction expression that we started with 3 fourths minus 3 sixteenths, and then we said that's equal to 12 sixteenths minus 3 sixteenths, and that the answer is 9 sixteenths. You might wonder why they made a tape diagram and you might wonder how they did that subtraction. What steps did the student take to, dis to subtract and how do you know? You might notice that they drew the tape diagram to find equivalent fractions between the 3 fourths and the 12 sixteenths. Do you see how 3 fourths and 12 sixteenths are equal to each other? They're both this amount on our tape diagram. One is broken into 16 parts and one is broken into four parts. You might notice that they renamed the three fourths as 12 sixteenths, but they kept the three sixteenths by itself when they subtracted. I mean, they kept it the same. Three sixteenths didn't change, right? Let's focus on using the tape diagram to rename fractions. Where do you see that in this work? We have a tape diagram that's showing three fourths, three out of four, and then they partitioned it. So each fourth has four equal parts, which would make 16 because four times four is 16. The four equal parts show sixteenths. And the tape diagram is labeled with both 3 fourths and 12 sixteenths. Why do you think a tape diagram could be helpful? It's showing you how to rename the 3 fourths as sixteenths so that you can subtract. We don't see any subtraction in the tape diagram though, do we? We just see them using the tape diagram to rename the fractions. That's pretty interesting. Okay, and then 12 minus 3 is 9, and 16 stays the same because it's broken into 16 parts. All right, let's look at another one. Let's look at 2 thirds plus 6 ninths. Do you think the sum is going to be less than 1, between 1 and 2, or greater than 2? two-thirds is less than one, right? It's two out of three parts. And six-ninths is six out of nine parts. So if we put those two together, it's probably going to be between one and two because we're taking two. Both of them are less than one and when we're adding them together. But they're greater than one-half, so their sum is probably going to be more than one. What fractional unit would make sense to add these two fractions together? Can you draw a tape diagram to rename? And which one do we need to rename? Hmm. Why don't we try drawing some tape diagrams here? 
let's think about two thirds. Three parts, right? Two lines makes three parts. And we'll color that in. Okay, there's two thirds. Now six ninths, let's do that in a different color. It's still gonna be one whole, right? These both representing one whole. Now, if I wanted to make six ninths, I know that three times three equals nine. So I could make three parts and break them all into three parts. Let's make these parts a little bit darker so we can see where our line is. There we go. Okay. Now if I have six out of nine, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six ninths. Mmm, interesting. You know, I think the book might have a tape diagram that's a little bit nicer than mine. Let's see. No, I don't see it there. Okay. So, two thirds plus six ninths. You notice that six ninths is e also equal to how many thirds? Do you see that it's also equal to two thirds, right? Or we could change them both to ninths. We kind of have some creativity here, right? So how could I change two thirds into ninths? Could I cut this into nine pieces? Because three times three is nine, right? Okay, basically what I'm doing is I'm multiplying because I'm breaking it into three pieces. I'm multiplying it by three. So now my two thirds is equal to six ninths. So then I have six ninths and six ninths, and that would be 12 ninths, right? Keeping the nine on the bottom the same because that's just telling me how many pieces I have, but changing the top numbers as I multiply. Let's try something else here. I think we might have a different tape diagram to look at. There we go. Maybe. There we go. Okay, so two thirds is the same as six ninths, same as the tape diagrams I drew right? Just a little bit neater. And six ninths is the same as two thirds. So six ninths plus six ninths would be 12 ninths. But 12 ninths is an improper fraction. So we might want to take it from 12 ninths, 12 divided by nine. One, one times nine is nine with three left over. So that would be one and three ninths, right? As a mixed number because two thirds is the same as six ninths. Okay, awesome. Thanks for watching so carefully. I'll see you in the next video. This was the first video of lesson five. Aloha.